redeeming the image of Africa all over the world. Hello, my wonderful people. A beautiful day to you wherever you are in the world. I remain your G, Arenga. Today, I'm at a very special location, a very special town, which is fondly known for farming. The people here are into farming. And today, we are at Ito Investment Company. Have you heard of palm tree before? Yeah, palm tree. You know, that blazed tree that nothing, nothing, you know, got to be wasted from the tree right from the leaves to the roots. So today, we are here to witness how palm oil, that's red oil, how it's being made. Yeah, we must have seen it from the title and I'm at the biggest factory here in Igbo Ye. So I will take you in now to see the process, let's meet the, the workers and uh, learn and see how they do this thing from beginning to you know where you now have the finished products. So I'm on my way now to the factory itself. Anyway, um, I'm just trying to establish the factory itself. Um, we will have someone that will definitely come to tell us more about it. The factory was established by my senior brother about uh, like, uh, as far back as 1999. He realized that uh, there was no employment in this community and that uh, he had to do something about it. So in effect, he decided that, okay, let's go agri. So he brought this agro allied uh, industry here uh, with the background that there are about uh, two farms or three large farms in the area, and we have some small, small one too that will support the factory. So we have one at Toguye, and there's another one at Enyo. That one I said, you know, is family uh, property. The Toguya is the community property. So I decided to establish this farm so that instead of uh, transferring the bunches to uh, another f uh, places, I said that let's establish this factory here. So we established it in 1999. And uh, between that 1999 and 2000, I was shuffling because I was still at Ibado, uh, working at uh, an industry in Ibado. 
So by 2000, I came permanently here after finishing my the assignment at Ibadan. And then decided uh, we were running it. And uh, by 20, uh, 2000, we started uh, bringing out oil, producing oil, palm oil. But unfortunately, my brother died in 2002. So eventually, the man to fall on me to carry on. So since that time, I've been trying my best to, uh, to ensure that the factory still exists. And that is what you have today. Mm. Uh, that sometimes in 1997, 1998, 1999, there was this uh, agreed something in Lagos by uh, uh, under the chairmanship of uh, one Uluigi. Then, so I was representing this community at that uh, uh, program. And uh, uh, as a participant in oil palm grower, we were asked to present something because that time we had, uh, the Oil Palm Growers Association of Nigeria was in the formative. So, and eventually, we asked uh, some, uh, some of us from different uh, 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 division in Lagos uh, to bring out a paper to us, uh, that we, you as, uh, they, they, they want to use as the constitution for the Oil Palm Growers Association. Eventually, I single-handedly drafted that of a per division, took it to Lagos, and eventually, it was the one I drafted that was adopted in Lagos. And we took it to Owiri. Owiri was the headquarter of the Oil Palm Grow Association of Nigeria. In Nigeria. In Nigeria. Okay. So, we took it to Owiri. And by and large, with only some amendment and a little contribution, that constitution was the one adopted nationally now. Wow. The Palm Grow Association of Nigeria. It was the, wow. well, the one, the major, at least 60% of my contribution was in that uh, constitution, wow. which was adopted. Uh, one so, sorry, Samuel, sorry. so that's to tell you that we are speaking with the right person. That reference, that, <laughs> that Madu, one reference Madu was the, was the chairman, national chairman then. He was the one coordinating the thing at Owiri. So we you know Owiri is noted for oil palm grower. So, and eventually, by the time they were inaugurating that of Lagos State, I happened to be the chairman of Lagos State Oil Palm Grower Association of Nigeria. Also, I don't think I know another person has been let up, uh, have been substituted for now. I'm not sure, because a long time, uh, the whole thing, because I was shortling to Uwiri to Abuja, sometimes go to Abuja for uh, committing and the exhibition in a Greek. We had to carry every bunch from Lagos to Abuja that, during that period. So, but uh, all that we made entreaty to Lagos to assist us, that thing was under the commissionership of uh, Olusoya. I was the chairman of, uh, I was the commissioner for a Greek, the Greek Legal State. But all efforts for the state to assist, I don't, I don't think they were interested in oil palm uh, growing. Because, because we have so many areas. We have uh, at the Lepe. Yeah. Uh, so we have oil palm something have been there when we are trying to uh, recruit people and, make, and gather ourselves together. At uh, Badagri, I was there too. And the oil palm something about agri. And they have one along uh, Lekki, Lagos, uh, uh, Road. That's uh, 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 after, before uh, Victoria Garden. There's oil palm there. So all these places, those are some of the things. But we decided we came together to form an association there at Kodutu, at uh, Bolokuta. Bolokuta. Yes. So there are so all, all these things. We, we, we got uh, members there, but eventually we did not have the support of the state. So everybody had to uh, come back to Shell and... Uh, mm. <laughs> anyway, let's hope that uh, the government will, you know, come to your heads in the future, mm, very soon. I'm sure they are listening now, and they know that, okay, this is something that they need to tap from. Because uh, the petrol will soon... <laughs> 
<laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so we still have to fall back to all these uh, natural waiting. resources. We are waiting because <laughs> each time they send their team from Agric, uh, Agric, uh, Minister of Agriculture, they come to assist the poultry farmers, cassava farmers, and so on. How about a farm? They said uh, it's a capital intensive something. Mm -hmm. And then before five years, you have to wait another five years for the gestation period for the something. So eventually, they seem not to be so much interested in your palm something. So uh, that, that time will soon come, sir. Well, we hope. We hope. So, Daddy, um, we want you to tell us the process that uh, you go through in producing palm oil. When they harvest the bunches from the farm, transport it to the factory here. So then the bunches were uh, slitted. If you ask, we are still using manual something to slit it into about three or four. That's for the for purpose of fermentation, so that air will go in to ferment it. So that uh, about uh, we wait about five to six days. Then this process they are doing now. Then you come and check off the fruit. By that time, I feel that the fermentation will have taken place and the fruit will be loosened so that it can, can come out of the bunches. So then, after the slitting and the something, after the shaking off of the fruit from the bunches, then we pass it through the sieve, which we are going to see now. We pass it, see, the idea is to remove the debris, a lot of braces and shafts that will come out, come along with the fruit. So after that sifting, then the fruits are loaded into the boiler. Shells, the dry shells, we use to fire it. Uh, it depends on the uh, volume of the fruit loaded in the bunch in the boiler. If it's a full boiler, a uh, boiler then was about 1.8 metric ton at the time. So with that full boiler, it takes about three to four hours for it to, to cook. So it will be okay so that it will be people that uh, can smell and hear that the thing is alright when it starts uh, smelling out. You know, the, the fruits are then uh, allowed to fall by gravity into screw press. The screw press, the idea of the screw press is to press the fruits. You know, the uh, pulp will be soft now. So it pop it then, squeeze the oil out of the fruits. When you squeeze the oil out of the fruits, you have the, the shaft and uh, the palm cannon. We will come, we be together, we fall in one side. And the oil will go, into, we bucket the oil and put it into the clarifier. is to cook the oil and the, the gourmet, okay, the gourmet, so removing whatever water and whatever may be in the, in the fruits. 
So Tata, the, that process can take about one and a half, one, half, one and a half to one and a half hours, depends on the volume of the oil. After the degumming, you know that the uh, water will settle below the, uh, the, the tank and the oil will float. Because, you know, the uh, water is denser than oil. Mm -hmm. So definitely oil will float Flow, yeah. on the uh, subject then. We, uh, we now float the oil. Sometimes we used to float the oil into a dryer, into another dryer, which is beside the, uh, the, the clarifier. So the idea is to remove whatever the trace of water that may be left. So then the oil, we allow the oil to cool for about 24 hours. If we, today now, tomorrow morning, we'll come and bucket it, we'll come and keg it. So we're ready to go to the market. I'm sure we've been educated about the processing of palm oil. So, um, sir, is there any other challenges that you face in the processing of this uh, palm oil? A lot. We well, start from the farm. The farm. You know, palm oil farm. A oil palm farm. It's, uh, it's very, very capital intensive in terms of maintenance. Can, you can see this place now. The farm is even can be even be bushier than this, and take a lot of money. We are talking about 40 to 40 hectares of farm. How can we say we want to use manual labor? But made all entry to the Lagos State Ministry of Agriculture to assist us with tractor. If you have tractor, you can easily with the slasher. You can easily assist. That will uh, make the farm to be very clean. So if it's clean, it will be very attractive. But to buy a tractor now, I think you will be having about four to five million. We cannot, this factory cannot afford that. So we need tractor, we need slasher and everything. We have the slasher, we have the tractor, it makes the job easier. And we can even expand the farm, we can still expand the farm. They have come to this place now. All these things you are seeing here, they are our uh, production, they are our contribution because the you know, government assistance, I, during the period, I, I, on, I went for one week training at nightfall. I went for nine, one week training at night for some time. So that was where we had the idea of this uh, screw press. Okay. That screw press. Because the screw press is very efficient, unlike the one we are using before, which is very manual. That one, at least, we can't be more than 60% efficient. They have a lot of oil trapped in the mm. shaft. But with the screw press, you can see you can achieve about 85 to 90 percent oh. efficiency. So that we have to go for it. The boiler to cost a lot of fortune with this boiler. Our idea was that uh, we will have support or make enough uh, produce enough oil. We call this tank there. They are supposed to be storage tank where we can store oil waiting for the market. But we are not even producing enough to do that. So just with all this, uh, we, 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 make, we, uh, we bought them on our own. Because you see that a lot of uh, money has gone into it. Even uh, electricity, we bought about uh, almost 10 poles to get light to this place, 12 to, to get light to this place. 
But even then, the purpose of bringing like that time was we wanted to activate because we are producing palm cannon oil too. Okay. That time, because we have palm cannon, we have crusher here. Mm. But uh, the crusher, if it's there, we have fire incident in the factory here. So the whole thing got burnt. So we, can, we have not been able to replace the crusher. So that time, so that uh, to get that one here is another thing. Yeah, because that time when we are produced palm cannon oil, people uh, into pigri, they came here to come and buy the cake. Part of the oil we sold to people making soap and other things. We were using part of it to make soap here too. We were making soap here at that time too, on a small scale. But now we have to sell the sell off the palm cannon because we don't have the uh, press here, the crusher to crush it. We thank you very much, sir, for taking your time. Just stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Daddy, if someone wants to come down to this place to get uh, palm oil, how will that person get to this place? Right from Ekpe. You say you get to a place where you are going to Iboye. Iboye. Iboye is it's under a local government. Okay. So once you get to Iboye, you say you are going to Palm Oil Factory or Intel Factory or Guti Main Factory. Okay. Guti popular. You say Guti Main Factory. Guti Main. Even the kid, you say okay, that's where you go. Okay. Take you to the place. Where you're so can you give Intel. us the number that they can reach you with? Uh, you can either call my number, you can call the Bengal number. Okay. Now it's 082-335-00974. Okay. Again, sir? 082-335-00974. Okay. We have that of a Benga. 080-6260-7602. Again, please. 080-6260-7602. Mm thank you very much it's a pleasure uh, coming here with to witness the processing you know that uh, we go through in uh, producing uh, palm oil